Okay, so it's library libations on location. We're at camp. Woohoo! We're gonna have a camp drink. Yes. So we're gonna be making a drink based on our book, um, and we're we're dubbing it the Spirit of the Woods drink. It's a very simple drink that we're gonna make. So we have our orange soda powder mix, and I'm just gonna put one of each into our mason jars. So one packet into wow drinks. Okay, so we have our drink mix. Do you have a way to measure the vodka? <laughs> so the, well, well the, the recipe actually is vodka to taste. So oh. it's your own preference on the amount of vodka you want in your drink. Half. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. In the book, right. it was vodka and tang. I mean, there was no, like, yeah. real mixer. So, yeah, we're, we're toning it down a bit. Or a Make it classy. Do you it's have more it? nuanced. <laughs> Just like we are. So, we're gonna do half a tablespoon of grenadine in each drink. Wow. Interestingly enough, it tells us to add the ice and the lemon before I top it off. Really? So, I'm gonna follow the recipe. Why do you think that is? I can see the lemon. I honestly would have put the ice in first. Yeah, it's instead of the drink mix. I mean, it really, it just, it's all getting mixed together anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think it matters. A lovely lemon slice for each. Just top it off with ginger ale. It almost feels like it's breaking all the rules of, like, drinkology. Yeah, this is a bartender with cringe. Yes. Um, and then last is just vodka to taste. It's like a shot's worth, right? Okay, so we have our Spirit in the Woods drinks with all the colors blending. It's really cool. Mm. Um, that stuff, just mix it in. Yeah. The interesting would laugh at us. <laughs> Honestly. <no. laughs> they have no clue. There you go. Okay, it's time to take a look at this month's kit. Let's start with the cocktail recipe. In the book, the main characters, as teens at summer camp, start off drinking vodka and tangs. I don't know about you, but I'm not at a point anymore where I can just drink vodka and tang straight up. So we've modified this slightly to incorporate additional ingredients, um, which hopefully is something that you will enjoy. Moving on to the accessories, we have two of those included in the kit. First, you'll receive a bookmark featuring a quote from the book and also a pin from Camp Spirit in the Woods. Finally, for the craft, we obviously had to go with a Camp Classic friendship bracelets. In this kit, you'll receive the materials and instructions for a spiral staircase variation, which is very cute and simple for beginners. All right, that's everything. Thanks so much for participating, and we hope you enjoy the kit. So shall we talk about the book? Yeah, the book. <laughs> it was interesting. It was. It was. Um, I was really impressed with the scope, like how much she managed to cover. Did you like it? Oh. Yeah, I guess that's the first question. Oh, Did yeah. Did you even like the book? Because I had very mixed feelings about whether or not I actually liked the book as a whole. I wasn't really connected super well. Mm. I feel like the book was really well done. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I've never read any of her books, but I would read another one. I think she's an amazing writer. Absolutely. And Absolutely. with all the like backwards and forwards, you know, between summer camp and at various points in their life, um, I think it's really easy to get confused and kind of muddled. But I didn't feel that way at all. Same. I, she was able to keep their stories. Yeah. Yeah. The way that she kind of put that together, I thought was incredible. Mm -hmm. It flowed really well. And I never felt like I was lost. The characters, I feel like they were relatable. Um, at least pieces of them were relatable. I don't know that they were always likable, mm -hmm. but human beings aren't always likable. I mean, Jules is the main character. How, how did you feel about Jules? I kind of wish that she didn't meet the interestings. Mm -hmm. Like, how would her life, her life would have been so much better, I think, if she hadn't even met them. I mean, then we wouldn't have a story, but her whole life is built around 
you know, trying to aspire mm -hmm. to, you know, her perception of them, essentially. Like, I feel like she never comes into her own. Oh, I completely agree. I was annoyed with her a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, well, just because the whole, like, the jealousy thing, mm -hmm. it was just so constant. Like, she lived her whole life in envy mm -hmm. of her friends, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I can see why you would say, like, I wonder what would have happened to her. Or would she have just found a different group of friends and done the same thing? With them, aspire to be them because she perceives them as better. I mean, maybe, but I feel like, I mean, she wasn't from the city. I think that was part of the allure, like, right. you know, there was this kind of mystical, like, exotic. Ooh, they're from the city and they're wealthy. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, there's a certain power in that. Um, and it would have been hard to find just in her suburb, wherever she grew up. There's this whole idea of, like, where I'm at and where they're at. Yeah. And they have all the things that I don't have. Mm -hmm. So does that make them better? You know, and to her, yes, <laughs> it does. But she never really sees that. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe she does as an adult. But by then, she's already so jaded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't know. I don't know how Dennis puts up with it for so long. Honestly. <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> I felt awful for him. I liked him. I really I liked his character. I just, I felt for him. I don't know how he stuck with it. I would have no patience. Like reading her the Christmas letters every year and the Christmas letters, ugh, those were kind of annoying. I it was see really annoying. Annoyed with that. Yeah. Yeah. She basically just told him like our life isn't good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Constantly. There's always comparison. Always. Mm -hmm. Constantly between the kids, between the jobs, between the money, between the vacations, between the relationships. Oh, <laughs> I was tired. I, I think it made me tired. And I think her home life was pretty sad too at that point. Like mm -hmm. her dad had just died and her mom obviously was depressed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she didn't really get along with her sister. I just felt like that was just kind of, I don't know what we got from the sibling thing. You know, like it wasn't towards the end that they were, the Jules was like, sorry I was brat. <laughs> that was the most interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we should, should drink everybody. <laughs> Game. I love it. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, that was the most, sorry, interesting part for me when Alan revealed, like, Jules had always assumed, oh, you must have been jealous of me hanging out with my rich friends and right. going to Iceland and, you know, traveling all over the world. And she's like, no. How about some of the other sibling relationships in the book? The whole Ash Goodman drama. Yeah. Dysfunction. Okay, but first off, how cool is the name Ash Wolf? Like, I oh, think that's, yeah. that is so cool. Like, you are cool. I know. <laughs> You're automatically going to be right? cool. You're destined to be cool with that name. Well, I think that brings up another interesting point. Um, how much your parents and your home life affects you. Mm. Because Jules' father died, and mm -hmm. so her home life wasn't so great. Ash and Goodman. Mm -hmm. Their parents were really interesting. They kind of let him get away with whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and then they counted on Ash to be the perfect daughter to sort of counter that. So I think she was kind of performing for them too. That's Which I really think is part man. of why she was able to be successful. She kind of had that drive in her. Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, you see it throughout stuff. the whole book. I mean, Jonah and his mom, his story was so sad. I know. Oh. I actually cried. I felt the strongest about Jonah, I guess. I completely agree. Everyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, and he had this inherent talent in him. Mm -hmm. Um, but because of what happened to him, you know, he had no confidence, mm -hmm. he had nobody to talk to about it, and he just kind of ignored it and went in a different direction. Mm -hmm. It just affected him for his whole life. Mm -hmm. Like, every his relationship. Yeah, exactly. Professionally. Mm -hmm. And yet he does come back to music eventually. Mm -hmm. I yeah. felt vindicated for him in the, during the conference when he finally was able to kind of get it out into the, the air of it. I felt good for him because he was able to live a little bit more authentically than he had pretty much ever. Then he gave Harry's banjo to Mo. Oh was yeah, that yeah. was a really was good, really yeah. So I guess in terms of parents, we can also talk about the kids' as parents. Well, I thought it was funny that just how the cycle kind of started again with Jules, going back to Jules, like her obsession and her envy. 
um, when their kids were born, she was comparing Rory to Larkin oh, in terms of talent time. and yeah. appearance. I was like, my God. Let her be. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. It had to be exhausting. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just. And then there was Ethan. Oh. How do we feel about Ethan? Oh. I think he's a creep. <laughs> yeah. I was creeped out initially Absolutely. when he was coming on to Jewels and that whole thing was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah. You know, half of this book I felt like you just want to shake the characters and Let it go. And I don't know if it's privilege. There's a lot of privilege. Oh, yeah. Like there's just, there's like a lot of entitlement. Do you know what I, So it's like maybe they just feel entitled to this or I don't know what, but oy. He was he was a creep, but the writing makes you do feel in terms like sad for him, mm -hmm. and but also just like oh my god, yeah he had he had a tough home life too with his parents. Yeah, was, I don't know. I think maybe it's like a guy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> like, guys are creeps. So. Well, and guys are that, <laughs> that time period too. That's. That's Absolutely. What I meant. In the Sorry. context of 1974 mm -hmm. versus 2022, yeah, you know, that was much more. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a valid point. Yeah, guys could do whatever they wanted. Hence, mm -hmm. Goodman. I know. Goodman. I was gonna say why you just took us right there. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that whole thing. Oh, it was well, that was horrible. Yeah. They bring up the point at the end of the book of Ash not believing Kathy after being such a like a champion of women and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, because she didn't even consider that Kathy could be right. Right. She couldn't even consider because it was her brother. Mm -hmm. Which I, I do understand familial loyalty, mm -hmm. but to that extent, when you are such a, supposedly such a champion of women, it, to not even allow the thought to crash your mind is definitely mm -hmm. um, do you think that's why she went and she wanted to be like a feminist director? Like subconsciously she felt guilty? Maybe, yeah. Like maybe that's what put her on that path. Yeah. I feel like she always had that lean towards it until it happened, but then it kind of went full in mm -hmm. afterwards. I remember that conversation between Jules and Kathy when mm -hmm. Ash basically tells her, hey, go, go visit her and see what's up. I was so angry. I just... Jules, it was like she was brainwashed by them. She just couldn't think for herself. Yeah. And she just refused to even go there. Mm -hmm. A lot of points in this book made me angry. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it makes you feel a lot. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, the, I completely agree that it's so well written. It tells a really good story in terms of, like, what it means to be human and how messy life is and how hard life can be, even with money and privilege, you mm -hmm. know? But how much of that was them getting in their own way, too? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which we all do. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's the human condition sometimes, to get yeah. in your own way. In, at least in some things, maybe not all. I feel like they got in their own ways a little bit more than some people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think with Ash and Goodman, for me, that was more about privilege and just expecting that things are going to turn out for them because they always have. Well, specifically, just their whole life. Like, yeah, their whole life. I was talking about, I guess, about Kathy oh, and that okay. situation, mm -hmm. um, the legal situation. But yeah, then throughout their whole life, I mean, Goodman just went off, and he expected that he could live abroad. Yeah, the but he did. Just did. Cover and them. people did. They just they they, they just covered him. Went with it. Yeah, his parents did, and then and then he also expected that he could just come back eventually. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was on not time. for his mother's death, but just. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, Ethan was creepy, I think, with Jules particularly, but I did connect with him too. And I feel like he was based a little more on morality, maybe, like with the Kathy situation and then mm -hmm. throughout their life. Well, and always trying to find good men. Yeah. You know, like that constant mm -hmm. drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that. And then it was unfortunate when it came to his own um, son who was on the spectrum, yeah. that he couldn't accept that. That was really oh, sad. That was terrible. I mean, I would, like, Jules maybe doesn't have this, like, innate talent that's really obvious. I guess when I say that, like, from birth, you know, you know, I was born to be a musician. Ethan, you know, he's always had this. He had that. 
I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he's an artist, for sure, in a big, splashy, flashy kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that Jules had that. Like, is that okay? Well, I mean, it seemed like her talent was like one note. Yeah. Right? Like, she was comedy. But it was very situational comedy. Yeah, she never really branched out of that. And honestly, was that really her just performing for her friends? I completely 100% think that's what Absolutely. Like, think. again, I feel like if she never met them, would that have even been a direction she would have gone in? Although I do think that humor and that part of her personality really came in handy um, later when she became a therapist. Mm -hmm. I felt like she was able to connect with her patients. I feel like Ethan and Ash couldn't have gotten married or couldn't have been in a relationship if Jules wasn't there. It's like not a buffer, but... Mm -hmm. I feel like Jules and Ethan were like sort of supposed to be soulmates in a way mm. and yet Ash and Jules were best friends and Ash told secrets like Jules knew about good men Ethan didn't mm -hmm. and then Jules knew about Ethan like um, when they were gonna go to the doctor mm -hmm. to figure out what's going on with Mo mm -hmm. you know he confessed to her that yeah where he really was, and Ash didn't know that. Yeah. Their marriage is really interesting. I think it feeds back into this whole idea of like, can they exist without each other? Mm -hmm. There's there's such an interconnectedness at this point that mm -hmm. they can't break away. Even to the point where I thought that everyone was kind of like, not sure about Dennis, because mm -hmm. he wasn't part of their group. You know what yeah. I mean? And he also He's had, an outsider. He also had a dedicated group outside of them. Right. Like, and they all thought that that was so odd. Mm -hmm because he wasn't as interconnected to Ben. But yeah, the other cult mentioned in the book with Jonah. Oh, I feel oh like yeah. Uh, if you want to make comparisons between dependency yeah. and like going from one group of dependency to another group of dependency, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting. And then his mom ended up there ultimately. Right. That just sort of cemented her place yeah. as this really unsupportive mother figure. Mm. But she wanted to feel like her life had meaning. Yeah. Still. Do you think that's ultimately what Jules was trying to pursue when she took over the camp with Dennis? Was like chasing oh. that feeling of like... I think so. But yeah. then being horribly let down. Horribly. <laughs> because it did not work out that way. It was just reality. Mm -hmm. like, the camp had blown up to something so fantastical. Something so... Such a fantasy in her head. Well, yeah. she she says it several times in books that if I had never gone there, so like having that sense and then going back to that place after so many years, it you can't help but be let down. When well, you can't be a sixteen year old camper. Yeah, and that in itself feels a little bit cold as well. Because like I think of the the previous. Owners. I was just gonna say we see that being so repeated. Yeah. So resistant yeah. to change. Like, the llamas were as far as they could go when it came to change, pretty much. Yeah. I really liked Lori. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she was cool. Yeah, I liked her too. And she was just, like, born, like, mm -hmm. happy. I don't want to say born happy, but content. Yeah. Well, and is that also, like, this theme of all these characters are pursuing something that they can't quite get to? She always knew what she liked. Do you know what I mean? And always had, like, could do that. And was just happy in that, like mm -hmm. being outdoors and mm -hmm. knowing that. So really, is it about knowing yourself? Is that really what one of the themes is? I would say so. True happiness yeah. is knowing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe these characters just never really knew who they were. We didn't talk about our lower camp experiences. I did not go to camp, but I did do one week of a sleepaway camp as a camp counselor. Ooh. The very first night, one of the boys came over into our cabin and put frogs in my bed. Oh. It was so like quintessential camp, like I couldn't even yeah. get back because I like, pulled the covers down and I was like, oh, there's frogs in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. I love that. I it fun. was really cute. I would have run screaming. And that was the reaction they were really hoping yeah. for. I went to mom and me camps starting when I was five. Oh. Um, and they were like a week long. There was a raccoon behind. Uh, like over by the tents where we were, we were all in front of the fire making banana boats. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and the raccoon scared us, so all of the girls got on top of the table and were screaming. And our mothers had to calm us down. And oh. it was oh my gosh. But I, it was 
some of the best summers of my life. I went, um, yeah, I think it was like a two week thing for a few summers, but I was more like middle school age, but it was very traditional. I mean, the arts and crafts and swimming, you had to take the swimming test, oh. so I went to the, the deep yeah. part of the lake and um, a lot of like team building. Mm. Yeah, just very traditional kind of stuff. We weren't drinking vodka and tang. Cheers. 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 To camp. <laughs>